In this lesson, we'll cover contour cutting your printed designs using Cutting Master 3 with Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. This process can be used for packing mockups, decals, and other applications. In the lesson Using Your Software, we discussed how to use the Cutting Master 3 with both Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. If you're unfamiliar with how to use Cutting Master 3 with these applications at this point, we suggest that you go over that lesson before you attempt this lesson. Here we have a design on the screen with several elements. Those elements are in the appropriate layers. Recall that the layers palette is used to separate different elements of a design. For instance, in this design, we've created a crease layer for containing all of the creasing lines, the cut layer containing all the cutting lines, and the print layer, which contains the elements that are to be part of the print. The crease layer has been placed above the cut layer in this list so that when the job goes to the cutter, it will plot the crease layer followed by the cut layer. The top layer is always plotted or cut first. The only thing needed in this design are registration marks. Cutting Master 3 can create registration marks automatically right within Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. To do this, we'll click on the File pull-down menu, hover the mouse pointer over Cutting Master 3, and then click on Registration Marks. The same is true with Corel Draw. When we click on the Application Launcher, we can then select Registration Marks. When the registration mark window appears, there are different options for the type of registration marks as well as their placement. The first choice is the style of registration mark. There are two styles of registration marks. Both styles are like L-shaped brackets placed on each corner. The difference is that type 1 has the registration mark corners facing inward, and type 2 has the registration mark corners facing outward. Another style offers segmented registration marks. These use either type 1 or type 2 marks for the corners, along with intermediary registration marks between the four corner marks. Segmented registration marks are for longer jobs that are over 5 feet long and are generally unnecessary for the jobs plotted on the FC4500. If we click on the style pull-down list, there are several choices. Since segmented registration marks are generally unnecessary for the cutting table, there are six other patterns that can be used. The first two place four marks outside the design, one on each corner of the pattern. For smaller jobs, four marks may be unnecessary. In that case, there are four other registration mark styles to choose from, two with three marks and two with only two marks. Having a reduced number of registration marks will speed up the scanning process, but it may reduce the accuracy. In this case, we need the accuracy since the design calls for two operations, creasing and cutting. Therefore, four marks type 2 will be used. As for the other settings, units will stay as inches. Length is the length of the individual registration marks. Length can be important for larger jobs because this will allow the registration mark sensor to more readily discover them during the registration mark scanning process. Thickness is also important for prints that have lamination. Having thicker registration marks allows the sensor to discover the registration marks more readily through the lamination during the registration mark scanning process. Margin is the distance the registration marks are placed from the cut path only when relative to cut job is selected. When this is the choice, keep in mind that while the registration marks should be as close as possible to the cut path, neither the cut path nor the design should be within the registration marks. Otherwise, the registration mark sensor will scan a line or object that is not a designated registration mark. At the same time, keep the registration mark at least three quarters of an inch or more from the edges of the media. When relative to media is selected, the margin then becomes the distance between the media's edge and the registration marks. Once again, keep them at least three quarters of an inch or more from the edges of the media. 
Align Document with Registration Marks will do just that. The positioning of the registration marks will be based upon the document's origin. Once all the settings are set to our liking, click Apply, and a preview of how the registration marks will be placed is shown on the document. In fact, clicking Apply allows us to view how the registration marks placement will look after any adjustments are made. Once the registration marks are set correctly, clicking OK will make the final placement on the design. Let's press Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac and start over. There is another option that allows placement of the registration marks to be more accurate. Let's draw a rectangle. We will draw it large enough to surround the design, but close enough so there is not wasted space. What we will do next is have Cutting Master 3 create registration marks based on the corners of the rectangle. To do this, while the rectangle is selected, click on the File pull-down menu, hover over Cutting Master 3, and then click on Registration Marks. We will keep everything the same, except we will click on the Convert Rectangle checkmark. Now we can Apply, or just click OK. And the rectangle is converted to registration marks, using each corner of the rectangle as the points of the registration marks. As a note, when converting a rectangle, the rectangle has to be selected in order to use the Convert Rectangle option. Our design is ready for printing, but first we have to disable both the crease layer and the cut layer so that they will not print. Now we can send this design to the printer. Here the job has been printed and has to be loaded onto the cutter. Getting the correct orientation is critical. This can be verified within Cutting Master 3. Before we send the job to the Cutting Master 3, both the crease and cutting layers have to be enabled. The print layer should be disabled, and it can be disabled within Cutting Master 3. Therefore, we can open Cutting Master 3 by clicking on the File pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Cutting Master 3, and then click Send to Cutting Master 3. This message may appear. It is true that it might be faster to disable unused layers such as the print layer, but in this case, we can use the print layer to get a better idea of the orientation by viewing the graphics. Just click Continue. As mentioned, orienting and aligning the media is somewhat critical. To see how to orient the print onto the flatbed, if we were to overlay the cutter over the preview window, it would look something like this. We can click on the Configure Cut Job Options window. Make sure By Layer is selected. We can see listed are the three layers, Crease, Cut, and Print. Since we don't want to cut the print layer, it can be disabled, which ensures that it will not be sent to the cutter. We can assign a media type to the crease layer and the cut layer. Recall that in the previous software lesson, we created custom media types. Prior to this job, two media types were created. One labeled Chipboard Crease Tool, and another chipboard cut tool. In this case, each can be assigned to a layer. We can assign chipboard crease tool to the crease layer and assign chipboard cut tool to the cut layer. This job is ready, so we can send the job to the cutter by clicking Send, where it will then find the registration marks, form the crease lines, and then cut. Here's the final result. Next, we'll share some helpful and unique features that will both enhance and speed up the print and cut process. The first is a simple one. The tool head has to be moved within the first registration mark. The FC4500 can speed up this process by automatically searching for the first mark. Once it finds the mark, it scans the mark as normal. and then continues on with the other three marks. As a tip, always try to load the media toward the left lower corner near the control panel. This saves you from having to move the tool to the middle of the media. This way, depending on where the first mark is, everything will be automated. The final feature is very useful when the job design requires the crease to be placed on the reverse side of the media, 
such as in cases where the crease lines cannot be marked on the print or when there is a need to have a reverse fold. The steps are very similar to the normal process previously discussed. The only difference is that this time we'll have the cutter, after it reads the registration marks, go back and cut out the registration marks. The reason it will cut out the registration mark is so that once the print is flipped over, the sensor will scan the holes and then be able to accurately crease and cut. After they are cut, the registration marks can be removed or popped out. The printed image can then be flipped over with the print facing down. We'll have the device read the marks from the reverse side where it is followed by the creasing and cutting operation. To show how this is done, here is the same design that was used previously. There are the same elements of the crease lines, cut lines, and the same registration marks around the image. Notice that this time, there is a sacrificial sheet placed underneath the printed sheet. This is to prevent the print from being attached directly to the adhesive mat, which at times can be destructive to the print. Because of this, the corner will have to be taped down. The cutter settings have to be adjusted. The first setting is where mark type has to be set. On the control panel, press pause. Press next once until this menu appears. Press F1 for mark. Press F2 for mark type. And then press F4 to ensure mirror is enabled. This is the setting that will have the cutter cut through the registration marks. And then press enter. Exit the menu by pressing pause again. From Cutting Master 3, the job can be sent. The cutter starts finding the registration marks as it normally does. Once the marks are read, this message appears on the display screen asking to cut the marks. Pressing F2 for yes, we'll then have the tool cut out the registration marks. Once the registration marks are cut, they can be removed. Next, a black felt marker, such as a Sharpie, needs to be used to darken the area on the sacrificial sheet underneath the location of the registration mark. Making it darker ensures that there is a contrast so the sensor can find the marks. As shown in this demonstration, the media has to be flipped vertically so that the first registration mark ends up in the top left corner. At this point, the cutter is prompting the tool to be positioned over the first mark. Since we flipped the image, the first mark is now located in the upper left-hand corner. Using the arrow keys, the tool can be moved to that position. Finally, press Enter and the cutter will begin finding the registration marks. And then creasing and cutting the job. We suggest that if you plan to use this process, make a couple of test runs before processing your first job. There we have it, the final result.